What's up, family? Get on this reporter, Mary Dance, returning Mary and Lee. Today is August 22nd, 2020. Sexy Saturday in my city, Chicago. I'm up early as always. Uh, well, I got this heart right here. I don't know where I got it from, but hey, this is it right here. Now, the um, song by the Intruders, uh, I'll Always Love My Mama, came out between 70, 1975 and 1977. Now, this here says, the greatest gift of all is family. And I made this uh, poem entitled Family, and I said, if a family is all you got, always remember it's something. And, you know, never forget that it's nothing dummy or some shit. You know, they got my book, Rhymes, Poems, and Metaphors, plus one song. I can't remember everything. And because I don't have a copy of my own book and stuff, you understand what I'm saying? The ones who do, you know I ain't lying and stuff. And the ones who don't want me to have my shit is because they know I ain't lying. You understand what I'm saying? For real. I'm an originator of rap. I'm the most controversial person in the world and stuff, but I'm not complicated. You understand what I'm saying? I'm... The most reasonable understanding and loving caring individual there is considering I've been a child abuse victim since birth. You know, young Pharaoh got this um this video talking about uh uh Kamala Harris or whatever and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? And he going hard body on a whole lot of stuff for about two hours. I put in the description of this and stuff, and they talk about the babies being raped. You know, at two months old and by 24 men and being trafficked and all kind of stuff. You know, see, I was that child. You understand what I'm saying? They trying to cover it up. You understand what I'm saying? My truth or whatever and stuff. I remember um, in 1995 when I gave my story again to Oprah Winfrey. In 1995, you know, my child abuse rap and I put it on cassette tape and everything or whatever and stuff. Long story short, you know, it's 2020. I haven't heard from Oprah, but the beat goes on, right? I also gave it to her in 1984, you understand what I'm saying? Because people was on this new wave of money and trying to come up, you know, they needed me, and now they need me more dead than alive and stuff because, you know, I decided just to keep, you know, my truths pushing through the airways or whatever the fuck, you understand what I'm saying? But, yeah, so in 1995, you know, I had, uh, you know, gave Oprah my story or whatever, my child abuse Story again, you understand what I'm saying? And, you know, they pretty much threw me in a cycle with and stuff. You know, when there was nothing wrong with me, I wasn't drinking, drugging, smoking, or none of that and stuff when I got to the cycle with. And because it's 703, according to this clock right here, you know I ain't lying. You see the Sony? You see it? You see it? Timing is everything, motherfucker. You see it? Uh-huh. 1973, I was in the Chicago Sun-Times newspaper. For real, for real. You understand what I'm saying? For being a child abuse victim. And Sony, if you add up the letters, real fucking so, if you add them up, you know, you do the math, nigga. If you know my story, you know I ain't lying. Real fucking so. I hope you can see it. God is definitely trying to tell you motherfuckers something. Real fucking so. And I'm sick of telling y'all over and over and over again. But yeah, timing is everything. <laughs> Boy, I tell you. So, you know, they had treated me like shit as a little baby. I had all kind of diseases and stuff at about two months old and stuff like the um, baby that Young Pharaoh was talking about in his um, video or whatever and stuff. Real talk. And, you know, they cured me, brought me back to health or whatever and stuff. But they was trying to, you know dirty up my name again after 1995 and stuff because they wanted my social security and my legacy and my family is worth a whole lot of money. I'm worth a whole lot of money and stuff, you know, and now they trying to take away my social security and shit. I don't care because I swear to God, ooh, I just want to drop the bomb, nigga. That's it. That's all I want to do. So, you know, as a result, I was going through some shit in 1996 and I broke both of my motherfucking ankles and shit. This, this is a true story. They was fucking with me so bad 
the police and the white motherfuckers and shit. I was walking around trying to, you know, clear my mind from all the shit they had sent me through in 1995 after they put me on a cycle or after I did the right thing by telling my truths and stuff. And I was downtown and this white guy was walking towards me laughing in my face like, yeah, now I look at you. You understand what I'm saying? And something told me to push him. But because, you know, I'm not a violent person and stuff for real, for real. I just pushed him a little bit. You understand what I'm saying? It wasn't enough for me to break both of my ankles and shit. But I, I felt it was a setup because I looked back and I seen the fucking goddamn police and shit. This real talk, 1996 and shit, real motherfucker talk. And when I seen the goddamn police, I, you know, went to this bridge. It was this bridge and shit in my city, Chicago, downtown. And, you know, I climbed over like a cat thinking I can drop down and, you know, get away. But because I was deprived of fucking goddamn milk growing up, because nine times out of ten, if you ain't got your mama titty to suck on, nobody gives a fuck, right? And I broke both my fucking ankles and shit. Real fucking too. And this is the scar right here. You understand what I'm saying? I hope you can see it. Real fucking too. Hope you can see it. That's the scar right there. Now, I don't have a scar on my right leg, but I have one on my left leg and shit. And I was like, if I broke both of my ankles at the same time, why is it, you know, that I only got a scar on the left leg? Now, I don't know if they programmed me with some shit, you know what I'm saying, and been trailing me ever since 1996. I don't know. But I remember walking around with two goddamn casts on my fucking legs and shit. And this lady walked up to me and I was crying and shit. And she was like, what you crying for? And I was like, you know, I, I want to play basketball and stuff. You understand what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe my higher power just told me to tell her that to stay the fuck out of my business. Why the fuck you think I'm crying? I'm walking around with two fucking goddamn casts on my legs and shit. You understand what I'm saying? The obvious, motherfucker. What the fuck? None of your damn business. What's, what's it to you? So they've they been trailing me ever since, right? You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, I could play basketball, but that's not my fucking mission in life. My mission in life is to stop getting raped and shit by pedophiles and, you know, whoremongers and things of that nature and stop these babies from getting raped and shit. And because I'm so, you know, outspoken, these motherfuckers is trying to kill me. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking self. So, I remember being homeless with two broken ankles and shit. You understand what I'm saying? And a cast on my fucking on my ankles and stuff. Now, you probably want to know how did I end up getting my cast on my ankles, right? Because after you get fucking goddamn fucked around in the head, nigga, two broken ankles, and then the police come. This is what happened, for real. The police came in a paddy wagon, threw me in the back of the paddy wagon. I thought I was going to the hospital. Them motherfuckers dumped me in a pile of trash. That's how much they gave a fuck about me. Dumped me in a pile of trash and shit. I had to walk on two broken ankles. I got to a busy street. You understand what I'm saying? And, you know, my mind is fucked up, right? I'm homeless. I'm fucked up. Two broken ankles. It's fucked up, right? So the bus was coming. And I seen the bus. But before I got on the bus, I seen this motherfucking white guy. He had a banana in his hand and shit. I remember this shit in 1996. Real talk. And I put my hand through his goddamn truck window and basically... Didn't say shit. He gave me that banana. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking tough. I didn't have to ask. Nothing. He must have seen me walking and just knew he had to do something. For real. And then I got on the bus for free. And I ended up going to Mount Sinai Hospital. And they fixed my ankles and put, you know, casts on them and stuff. And that's how I ended up in AA. For real, for real. 1996. For real, for real. But my sobriety date is on Christmas of 1997 because I took it seriously then. You understand what I'm saying? At first, I didn't know what the fuck to think. But in 1997, you know what I'm saying? I got my shit together or whatever. So, long story short, before all that, I got to tell this part about the police. Was trying to put me in a fucking goddamn um, shelter. A white police officer. Because, you know, this is called intruders. This is all, I always love my mama, right? And in, intruders, I mean... My city is being invaded, intruded, and all that. Just like my city, my uh, my um, my apartment building or whatever. And I know this is my parents' building, but you know that's another story. But anyway, so I'm downtown. I'm homeless, and and I had these two broken ankles, and I got two casts on, and I'm trying to figure out where the fuck I'm gonna go. And I'm across the street from the old Pacific Garden Mission that is now called Jones College on State Street, not too far from Hale Washington 
motherfucking goddamn um, library and stuff. And I'm laying down on the, I'm not laying on the ground. The police walk up to me and say, you want to go in the um, shelter? And I, the spirit, you know, just didn't sit right with that white motherfucking shit, police officer and me. And I was like, no, that's a man's shelter. Because I kept hearing, you know, a lot of men was up in there and shit, for real. And he was like, no, no. I said, yeah, that's a man's shelter. And something told me to lay on the ground. And do you know that motherfucker, white police officer, stumped my motherfucking goddamn ankle with my cast on it trying to break my shit? See, Ray Charles, he got a song. He got a uh, he got a movie called Ray. Jamie Foxx played it. And they, his mother said, don't let him make you into a cripple. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking talk. So now, yeah, I can run, skip, and jump, but I have to, I have to um, work out so I can keep the weight off of my ankles and shit because, you know, you know, they've been repaired or whatever. So when they see me running for the bus and shit, something I shouldn't be doing because I had a car May 31st, 2008 that the police stole and along with my other shit, you understand what I'm saying? Just to fuck me around and shit, you know. So now I get a free bus pass and shit. They don't want me to have that. And they try to set it up to say, see, she she can fucking run and everything. But like I said, I got the scar to prove it, nigga. And everybody know too much pressure will bust a pipe. So if too much weight on my fucking ankles eventually will, b- will break my ankles again. So I have to work out and, uh, you know, try to walk around and keep... My weight down and shit, for real. I mean, these motherfuckers, scientifically, they is definitely trying to kill me. So they don't care about the babies. They don't care about me. Police ain't shit. Everybody know about the Valentine Day massacre back in the day when the police dressed up like the motherfucking goddamn cops and killed their motherfucking goddamn, you know, motherfucking enemies or whatever and stuff, you know? Shit is crazy, right? They're on Clark Street, right where I got railroaded, on Devon and Clark, not too far from there. You understand what I'm saying? May 31st, 2008, when they lied and said I disarmed the police officer, something I did not do because they just don't want a want motherfucker to make it for real, for real. And I'm going to make it regardless. And I'm be the one to push the button. Them, everybody's scared to push the bomb and shit because they know this world is fucked up. It's fucked up. We made too much money with rap, entertainment, church. You understand what I'm saying? All kind of shit. You understand what I'm saying? Just think about all the shit that you bought that you know these motherfuckers made a killing off of. Like gym shoes, Jordans and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? All kind of shit. And we still talking about what? Bullshit. Because these motherfuckers don't want to stop raping babies and trafficking motherfuckers for their organs and all, all this santat- sat- satanic bullshit. And these motherfuckers in this building that's listening just as dumb as the motherfuckers that got them it know better. You understand what I'm saying? It's like the more I teach them, the dumber they get. You understand what I'm saying? Real fucking talk. And they can see in their face, because I know they watching, that, you know, this ain't a fucking game. They can see that. But in their mind, they, oh, I'm gonna win. How the fuck you gonna win when I didn't already won, motherfucker? You understand what I'm saying? Like Cardi B said, I'm in competition with myself, nigga. I ain't finna lose to me. Motherfucker, my shit is the truth. I'm like just hilarious, motherfucker. And my news is real. You understand what I'm saying? But what you, who you think motivated her? If I'm your ghetto news reporter, who you think motivated her? You understand what I'm saying? See, they want to pick and choose who they want. Motherfuckers that do anything to get along or whatever. Why y'all study kill me. And then when I'm dead, they're going to get y'all any goddamn way. They, they ain't no honor amongst thieves, nigga. They ain't no honor amongst thieves. And these fake ass police officers, I swear to God. When y'all turn car, man, ooh. It's going to be some shit because you can't trust the police. It used to be officer friendly up in this motherfucking city, Chicago, where I'm from. There's no more officer friendlies. No, don't run to the police for help because nine times out of ten, they part of the fucking problem and shit. Real fucking talk. You do better praying and staying away from their ass. That's why I came up with a rap that said the police I'd rather not see. Because every time they pull me over, they think my car isn't drug free. Just because it's going on doesn't mean that I'm the one that's doing wrong. Because if I had a hoopty, you would pass it by and laugh. But seeing this caddy makes you mad. You must be a fag to be so sensitive. Worried about the way I live. Get real. Haven't you heard you can't judge a book by its cover? Because if that's your case, you could get me for murder in the first degree. It sounds silly, but it's the truth. The police don't give a fuck about you. And my shit was not as bad as fuck the police. And they still hate me. Imagine that. And it, this this another thing. If Eazy said that Ice Cube write the rhymes that he say, why did Eazy have to die? 
if he was only reciting what Ice Cube told him to say. You see where this is going? Are we there yet, motherfucker? We been there. You just skipped me, motherfucker. Should have picked me up with your silly ass. And with that, this you get a news report of Mary and Dad's between the Mary Lee. I always love my mama. Oh, my mama. And if my mama's after me, goddammit, I'm going to always love my higher power. With that, peace.